as a girl child and as a woman, don't forget that if you quit, you will never win. So quitters never win and winners never quit. Welcome to She Experts Breaking Barriers Through Sports. This is a series of the ITK podcast Experts in Global Sports Voices of Change. Listen to unshared knowledge, projects, experiences, and stories of the ITK women, women in sports. In this episode, I speak to Formum Victorine from Cameroon. She is the deputy director of the training center of the National Football Academy of her country, Cameroon. She is also the president and founder of her association, Global Women Emancipation in Sports. She is a physical and sports education teacher, and she's also a professional football coach for both men and women. And despite all of that, she was also a successful athlete in so many different disciplines. I was super impressed. It went from football to table tennis to judo to running to gymnastics. And yeah, she calls herself a multidimensional sportswoman, which I think fits very well. She was in Leipzig in 2010 in the football course and she was the only woman. We spoke about how she did get access to sport, about her role models, and she told stories about how, for example, gaining a bottle of juice motivated her so much to be a champion in her sports. I learned from her how important education is, despite the passion for sports. And also that as a woman in sports, you need special effort, sacrifice, love and passion in sports to be successful. It was so inspiring and interesting to listen to what Victorine had to tell about her life and all the little stories. And there's so much more. So I'm sure there's going to be another episode with her. But yeah, enjoy this episode and listen for yourself. Welcome to the first ever episode <laughs> of the ITK Women podcast. I'm, I'm glad we can speak like this. <laughs> Me too, I'm um, glad. Yeah, maybe we can start with who, who are you? Where, where are you? And what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. Um, so many questions. Okay. Um, Victorine Fomo, uh, a physical and sports education teacher. Um, I work for the National Football Academy as assistant director to the training center. And uh, recently I was appointed to the National Technical Department of Football in Cameroon as the second assistant and in charge of female football. And uh, <laughs> I am equally um, a multidimensional sportswoman because I have done a lot in sports and different sports disciplines. So and I have won a l over 60 medals, as you can see some behind, 50 trophies, uh, so many awards in over seven sports disciplines. I am an Olympian in table tennis. Wow. But I currently operate in football, soccer. So, but then I have been able to be opportune to have done a lot of surprising activities into sports and uh, have managed so many associations and uh, in my country i happen to be the first woman to have trained a first masculine division in a second division team that i took it to the first division 
uh -huh. worked with them for over five years. So that is me and my sports career. But then I equally do some sociocultural activities. And, uh, and this I talk about um, creating an association, Global Women Emancipation in Sports, that seeks to valorize more women in sports, uh, encourage more women to be leaders, and uh, combat violence against women, leadership, train women to be autonomous, and uh, that notwithstanding with equally another association, the uh, Abakwa Sports Academy, this is to impact the women or the young boys and girls on my community to be able to do sports, which means I have a sports training center. And the training center, we have under 15 boys, under 17 boys, a second division female team that have many times been a regional champion and have participated in the National Cameroon Cup Championship. And many of the players have sometimes to be selected into the national team. And then I have a second division masculine team too. I have a judo club. So all of this is giving back to my community. What will give me the chance to be able to be the multi-dimensional person that I am. Okay, so, wow. That that sounds like a lot of dimensions. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, maybe, mm. maybe we can go back to the beginning. Like I... I would like to know how did you get this access to so many sports like with which sport did it start and who like how did you access this sport was it your mm -hmm. parents or how did it happen yeah my access to sports started with my parents my parents were a great fan to sports especially my dad who was uh, a president of a of a football club in called Top Tazamu Tengene. And then he had been an executive in the regional house, Fika Food House, managing sports. And um, with that opening playing tennis in for, for, for leisure, he used to carry us around to go maybe pick balls while he's playing. And then as children, he gave us the opportunity. We had a big yard by providing for us the little gadgets, the balls, for girls, for boys, but without any particular dimension of what you can do. And then you no know, growing in a neighborhood where everybody has to struggle to be him or herself, we had to be open to other skills, running around, riding bicycles and things like that. So once you are doing those things, you start learning how to do some flexible activities, gymnastics and things like that. So that is how I was open to these activities, even though at times I had my brother say, oh, you, you're going to be a man, you are going to be. So all of that gave me the opportunity. And then once he discovered that we had shown him interest in the game, he would take us now to the football field um, at the eve of his team playing a match. And I didn't know he was actually building a skill in me that I'm glad I'm using it today. He would take us to the field and tell us, just look at all what is happening, then you tell us the best player. As children, we don't we think that the best player is the person that scored the goal. So we always write the name. So How once you do that, you? ah, I was as young as maybe five, six years, that kind of stuff. So you don't even know what is the difference. Yeah, that says, give me the best player. Maybe somebody that is running better. You, you would, without any particular skill or knowledge about the game. So when we do that in the evening, if they played the following day and the team either won or the player played well, you will be entitled to a bottle of juice. So you see, it became an interesting game for us. Everybody wanted to be able to give the best player that will be validated in the game of play. So he gave me the skill of detecting players, which I use today because I've been able to detect so many of those players who have been able to play in the national teams and things like that and to even have my own team. And then... In table tennis, now when he discovered that he could not now go to the club every day to play lawn tennis or table tennis, he made a board in the house. And virtually only him and my elder brother knew how to actually play the ball over the net in table tennis. So he was like, but why did I make this board and then nobody is playing? So he said, anybody that will win me, I will give you a bottle of juice. So he had a way of motivating us to learn by doing and being the winners. Yes, so 
each time just like that until now I got to college and uh, they said, oh, the, the final school games, I discovered that, oh, um, school champion, divisional champion, and I had to go and represent the whole region. And um, in representing the whole region in table tennis, I was the only one in that delegation that brought a gold medal to the region. Wow. So you see something that started like a child's play in the house and uh, you just been encouraged to have a juice, gave me another opening. And from then I got into the national scene until then I became um, uh, champions. I've been 12 times Cameroon champion, quadruple Central African champion, African champion. I've been to the Olympic Games. I've been to the World Cup reserved for the best 16 players in table tennis representing the African continent. I've won a bronze medal in the U.S. Open in table tennis. So you see, just from a little anxiety at home, I didn't know I could be this. And uh, I equally became a national coach in that discipline, mm. controlling all the different categories in that discipline. Some of these victories were won while I was equally a coach player. As for football, that was for table tennis. As for football, it was just like playing around. We we come from a very large family, like 32 of us, and uh, with a big neighborhood, so with big yard. So each time they will come to play. But the girls now will want to play in the corridors, but I want to play with the boys. And my brother was, get away, don't come here. So each time I dribble a, a, a boy, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be a target for beatings. But then it gave me a lot of encouragement because other boys wanted to use me to humiliate the big boys in the quarter that could not play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so at least I know that will give me other skills to be able to be play. So I started playing. After that, I went to a secondary school. And in that secondary school, during the school competition, youth day competition, a team, a, a civil club saw me and then took me and said, okay, they wanted me to play. But I told them that uh, it's difficult for me to play because my, my father is a very strict man and wants us to further our education. I was in a boarding school, but I said, no, go meet my dad. Then my dad, knowing that once children start playing, as vice president of Foot in the Northwest, then he said, if she starts playing, maybe I will not be able to study. My dad told the people that if you want my daughter to play soccer, the day she fails an examination in school. Yes. I'm going to lock you people up. The people say, but how can we control your daughter in school? He said, no, if you want her to play, you must make sure that she goes to school. Yeah. So, but I didn't know all of that was for my good. But I kept saying, okay, when they said, okay, they will do that. So each time during training, once training finishes, they go home, go home, go home. They don't want to have any problem with you or with your dad. And uh, I kept to the faith because I was passionate about it and I loved it. And when I got to Form 5, when I had to write my GCE ordinary levels, I was called up in the national team. Five of us were called up from the region, but my dad said, you are not going anywhere. You cannot study for five years, from one to five, and you are writing your first public exams, and you want to go and play soccer. That can wait. I said, but dad, you said I should, and I can, and I have the qualities. Why? I got mad at my dad. I ran away from school. The president knew my... He, 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 how my father was very strict said no no if you are here my, I'll go to prison so took me back to school met the principal they discussed with the principal and um, it was very very interesting she kept me they accepted without the knowledge of my father and my mother to keep me in her house for a, for a week to let my psychology calm down and then when she finally brought me back to school Cameroon was playing against Nigeria that day and uh, I wrote economics an examination in two hours, in 30 minutes, because I wanted to go listen to the score. And I bet you, Cameroon, Nigeria lambasted Cameroon 4-0. I wept all day that if I were there, it would have been a difference. But then, those were just wishes, because I didn't go anywhere, and I succeeded. Those of my classmates who, were, who finally went for the selection, only one has succeeded to actually become a professional today. The other since then have not been able to make it after that examination. So you see, those were some of the benefits that they were training me, but I didn't know. And uh, before that, even in Form 3, before actually joining the team, I remember my dad 
but I failed an exam uh, in Form 3 first term. And uh, second term, my dad didn't buy me anything. He said, you have failed, so nothing. He took all my sports equipment and burnt them. I was like, dad, why do you say you didn't make it? So for me to have money to school, my mother need to meet my brothers and my sisters to get little money from them to say, okay, she cannot go to school empty-handed. You are all in the boarding school and you often have different needs. So this is how she took 10,000 years, 15, 30,000 years and gave me to make my own package for me to buy my own things to school. And uh, since then, I bet you I've never failed an exam because I saw the impact of it. I felt that I didn't meet up to expectation. You could love sports, but you didn't go to school. And uh, today, if I have um, a, a doctorate in, in sports training and performance, it is thanks to that, that training. And I did all of this while going to school. So you see that these are things that you never know that you are being trained, but you are being trained indirectly. Yeah, and then in gymnastics, just like that too. So I could now go participate in competitions without knowing that I was being performant because you just need to do some flips with some children in the quarter. You put a a, 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 a wheel of a car and you spin over it, and I could represent my schools in school competitions. Judo, I never knew. I never saw judo while I was growing until I got into a professional school, the National Institute of Youth and Sports. And uh, they give an age limit for the professionals, for the students of the professional school to participate in the university games. They said students from the professional school could not participate above 25 because they knew that they are already professionals. So some of us who were younger were obliged to participate in more than one disciplines. And one of those disciplines that I have never known in my whole life was judo. But the coaches said, I have this, I have the physique that I could be a champion. I said, but I've never seen it before. So they said, no, you will do it, you will do it. And let me give you this little story, which is has always kept me wondering and thinking. And then I think, but it was a motivational part of my life too. The teachers came and removed me in an examination hall that until I accept to do judo to represent the school, I will not write the examination because... When I was writing the concours, I said I would do everything for the success of the school. I said, okay, if that's the case, then I will do it. So when they took me out of the examination hall, I, I came back 30 minutes later. They said, okay, you have one more hour. And when I got to the judo hall for the first time, I saw the girls were as small as myself. But I, did, I didn't know they were professionals already. I said, oh, I brought my village technique and my village force first fight because I didn't know anything. I had a bone dislocation in my shoulder. Look at me, a handball star, a table tennis star, a volleyball star, now having a dislocation. How do I then go participate in all of these other competitions? But he told me that that was just the beginning of my success because I will be treated in two days. Brutal training. Wow. Brutal, brutal treatment. They took me to a, a <laughs> to the bar fix. I held it. They say stay there for hours, and I blah, 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 blah. and I went and fought in the university games. My first fight was with, was with a black belter. She had a black belt. Me, no belt, no qualification, no no knowledge, and I won. I got gold medals and silver medals in judo. So. <laughs> you will not believe it. Okay, wow. So you got from from table tennis to football to judo. Yes. And then <laughs> gymnastics. See, see, I'm parading them handball. Then athletics. I used to do my footing to keep fit in football. So after my father died, uh, life became very tough for us. And we are many. My mother too wasn't actually earning something. So she was actually struggling to see that. But I said, okay. Let me be able to do something. I have skill. I have talent. And uh, for me to be up to who am I, let me be participating in competition. So while I was doing my footing, I saw, I had um, a radio announcement and I saw posters for a marathon competition. And I said, the distance is this distance. I always do it for my footing, for my own leisure. So why don't you try this with people who say they are specialists? Lena, amongst the 200 marathonians or athletes who ran that race i will, i came out number seven wow. 
So that is how the coach, the university coach told me, hey, but where have you been? Come, you join the marathon club in the university. So that I started doing, participating in marathon races, international, local, and I even did the Mount Cameroon Race of Hope, where I got two medals from there. And uh, you see, these are the things that kept me moving and doing those, these things. And uh, volleyball, handball, that was those were skills that I already developed in school, representing my school, my faculty, and things like that. But then... How did you get from the being like an athlete in so many in so many sports how did you become what you are now like you're a coach and you you're in several associations how did you get to these positions you see when my father died as i said th things became very rough and uh, you know as a young girl as a champion men young boys would be disturbing you here and there either to to have you for little or nothing and things like that and then you want to access they will say okay no they'll give you conditions but i said but i have my skills i can work my own money with my skills so and my father was a very popular man and a big man so i used to go to his friends and tell them that i have a competition so they should help me with transport so they will give me the money for the transport even though the resources or the winning package was not enough but i was working hard that that was my own source of income so if i hear that there is a competition in germany and i can have an air ticket to germany I will be there even if the pay package is just a certificate or a trophy. Yeah. So just then when I will come back, I will go need to go show them that I've won. They say, okay, take this five thousand, take this. So that is how I started making my own source of income. Yeah. And with this now, I had to be doing all of these post disciplines. There is a competition here; you need to go there. There is a competition; you need to go there, even if the package is not much. It was very, very demanding, very, very challenging. At times, they will not even give you the money. But you you are happy that you have won. It is not a man that I will boy that has fought you to give you the money. So, you see, I was building my own charisma. So, this now gave me the opportunity to now write the I, the concur into the sports sports institute, which I succeeded. And then I started now becoming a professional. And then with my skills... And in the national school, everybody wanted me to specialize. The boxing coach wanted me to do boxing. This one wanted to do volleyball. This one wanted... I became confused. I didn't even know what what specialization to do. And uh, the class master then said, oh, for you to do football, everybody wanted to do football. But he said, for you to do football, you must be able to be among the first 20 to choose football or you choose from the other disciplines because they wanted to make people vulgarize other federations that they have specialists trained in those different federations. So what happened was that I couldn't choose because I was not amongst the first 20. I was the 23rd out of 61. And then I couldn't choose because, you see, all the coaches, all the teachers wanted me to do their specialization. But I didn't know and I don't know them. But they, they, they said I have skills. So when the teacher asked me, I told him, he said, okay, write, 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 um, write a resume of all the things that you have done and that you can do in every sports discipline that you know. I wrote it and gave it to him. It took him two weeks. And what did he tell me? He said, I've gone through all what you do. You have a lot of skills and you have a lot of talent. But since the creation of the National Institute of Youth and Sports, Nobody has ever specialized in football that has a first degree and has played football in the past. So you will be the first, and I want you to do football because in football, it's very complex and complicated. That way you already have a free and easy access into the football world. The other disciplines, since there are no women, they, they can easily co-opt you at any time. And just like magic, while there in Iron Angels, I did everything and I applied for sponsorship from FIFA, which I was granted to complete my, my studies. And I finished my studies with that. And then I finished. I knew that I was going to actually actually continue. But then I was appointed national coach for table tennis, which means what he said was right. But then, <laughs> you see, I didn't hesitate working in the game I love, in the football that I love, doing all my training courses and things like that, coaching teams here and there until now and again. I had the opportunity again to have a window to the world yeah. to apply for the international training course in the University of Leipzig. 
where I was selected in 2010. So you see now, with that bigger specialization again in football, it was like, oh, this is the kind of woman that we need in this and things like that. So you see now, it started orienting my specificities in, in, in football. If I am correct, you you were the only woman in, in Leipzig in the course, right? I wonder, yeah, I was the only woman. <laughs> I wonder how, in general, um, how was it also in your country, in Cameroon, to be a woman in the football world? Because I can imagine, even in Germany, the female football isn't very, like, it's not very popular. It, it There is a, like, it's getting better, but it's still not as for the man and I I just wanted to know how is the situation for women in for women in sport in general but also women in football in your country. In particular. It wasn't easy because even while in Germany I was not only the only woman, I was equally the class representative. So just doing it with those men it wasn't chocolate. But then God had God has blessed me with some managerial skills and tactics to be able to manage them and we all left happily and today we are talking with each other in their different countries just like back here it is not easy because when i came back i had to do some training courses to get my licenses the c calf the b calf the a calf the federal licenses it was not easy even getting a team i remember when i was doing uh, as an internship student or trainer in a team to get my license a calf uh, training certificate after i finished and i validated the president of the club dragon club of yaoundé president come max said he would like to keep me to be one of his coaches he was like people went to him why would you take a woman what does she know say he said this woman has techniques and tactics that you people don't know she has no how that you people don't know the people went to him so many times say we, we will come and walk to you for free Take us, leave. There are many men out. The man was steadfast with his words. He kept me there. The pay packet was not too much, but it was encouraging to see a man supporting you to the teeth. Even at times when I said, okay, he wanted me to be here, but it wasn't chocolate. When we finally succeeded and took the team from second division to first division, it was like, wow, this woman will certainly be officially be pronounced the head coach but then it wasn't easy that is why i couldn't i got all but i couldn't you see mm. still be appointed head coach for the team but my head coach i had my head coach that constantly was out of the country for one or two reasons and some others and each time the head coach is out we worked together and we had results it was like oh look at the results she's bringing but then the constraint of having a woman lead a masculine team was never, never approved. But then it still, it still gave us the reason to know that the fight for a woman to actually have complete leadership and rulership in the game of sports is not an easy task. But we need to continue to do it, especially once we have talent. And I think the president gave me that opportunity because I have talent. But if we sit behind and wait that these opportunities will come and meet us without any talent, without any effort, We must have effort equally besides the opportunities given to us. So those are the things that we, ha we have. So until then, I was appointed a deputy director into the National Football Academy. It has not been. And even the young women, the young girls that are there to struggling to, you see, the sacrifices are not there. It is very, very challenging. The few that are there are doing it with a lot of love and passion. But you see the pay packages, it's not the same. You see subventions come for the men team, maybe um, 20 million. But for the women team that will play in the same distance, it's just 5 million. Mm -hmm. So the challenges for, a for, a, for the women in sports to actually have a total advantage, it's, it's, it's yet to be there, but it's gradually getting to be there because with the new, with the new leadership, of Fika Food, which I have been appointed as the one of the national technical directors of football. He has made me in charge of female football, something that has never happened. You so see, this, this is an opportunity. So now we need and we need to go there and talk to defend the rights and the interests of the woman. Maybe the men were that that were there were not defending enough. 
because there is no other voice. But I think this is an, and I need many, I cannot do it all alone. It should be a collectivity. And that is why when I had the opportunity to be part of the Ithaca Change Maker program in, in December last year in Germany, for me, it was another eye opener. Because you see, you learn from people, their diversity, their challenges, their successes of what is happening in their country. And after that, today, I am appointed. I think that learning doesn't stop. Learning is a process that continues. And before you succeed, you must have passion to be able to do that. And the women, we have a majority in population the world over. I don't know this. I don't think there's any country in the world that the men have a greater population than the women. But everywhere it is the men leading, dominating. So we should be able to use our skills, use our opportunities, use our talents, use our know-how to be, once we are up there, take another woman so that the chain of inclusion will be continuous and persistent. It's a hard rock because we are living naturally in a chauvinistic world, the world over. God made it that way, but we need to break those barriers. Yeah, you're, you're so right. And I think um, for young girls and women in sports or football, also role models like like you, for example, are very important. And I wondered, <laughs> Thank you. I wondered um, if you have a role model or did you have a role model when we when you were young? Yeah, yeah. My role model was um, uh, Pili do Nascimento the Brazilian star. And then Abedi, um, Diego Maradona. Those were the nicknames I had because you see those skills. I never knew them. I read, at least I read is the story of Pele's greatness. So I kept dreaming that I would be like him someday. And then while I was growing, though I never read much about his academic background, but with the, with the, with the, with the, with, with, with the encouragement of my parents, especially my mother, and my father, who have always wanted me and my brother, my siblings, to be able to be up to date academically. I kept forging hard. I said, but if you have this, you have an educated father, you have an educated mother, what stops you when they are giving you the opportunity to study in the best schools in Cameroon for nothing? What else do you have to do is to sacrifice and give them the reasons to pay your fees and then you give them the results. So that is why when I failed in Form 3, I said it will not repeat itself because I'm losing an opportunity. There are many people out there. And my father, once you fail, he started orienting his resources and interests everywhere. So I had to remain steadfast. And I want to give a special thank you to my mother that has been there. Despite the challenges, you can do it. You will do it. You will make it. Yeah. And all these trophies that I keep winning, She's always there. The money, the money has not been coming, but she has faith that many people have not been able to have this kind of things. One day, God will see you and God will lift you. And I think some of the upliftment is coming through the courses that I'm doing every day, through the sacrifice I'm doing every day, through the appointments that I'm having now. I think everything has time. Maybe it was not just the time for me to get those things, but... They wanted to see the other part of me, how you could be able to succumb to the challenges of the present time. Yeah, that's definitely, like, if you have this network, like, for example, the ITK women, like your family, your local network, but also the global networks, and I think that's something very important for, for girls and women in sports. Um, I want to ask you one last question. Um, is there something that you would recommend your younger self as a girl, like thinking about girls in sports right now? Yes, yeah, certainly, because the message I have for young girls and boys is that the barriers are there, but then you should have to be a barrier breaker. A barrier breaker, you need to go to school. You do your sports and then leave your goal, leave your passion. 
Because while in school, you have your passion, you can always be able to meet up with these challenges. And especially for the girls that you think that if you want to succeed without education, what if this, you have an injury today? Everything goes to naught. You need to start to say, oh, I wish I went to school. Now a man will come and get married to you. What happens? If he doesn't have a means for both of you to live together happily, you start regretting all of your life. So little education will give you the opportunities to live your goals and live your passion. And then once you live your passions, you will know that certainly the path to being a dominant personality to being a leader will be open because as a girl child and as a woman, don't forget that if you quit, you will never win. So quitters never win and winners never quit. So young girls today, the message for you is never quit because there is a barrier or there's an uphill task, but instead stay and make the difference. It starts just with one step. It starts with you and it starts with me. It starts with Iteka, the trainer course, now change maker, and today other things for the women. So tomorrow, together, we are better. Thank you for listening to this episode of She Experts Breaking Barriers Through Sports a podcast of the international trainer course, Experts in Global Sports. If you feel addressed by what has been said, if you might have similar projects or ideas or experiences, if you have any resources to support the woman I spoke to, any ideas, funds, knowledge or skills, or if you just liked listening to this podcast, Get in touch with ITK Women on Instagram and Facebook and be part of the community. You, me, us must protect women's rights and bodies. Together we break all barriers through sports. It starts with us and with you.